<laughs> Every time I close it, I can't help myself. I have a little bit of sick in my mouth. <laughs> Guys, today we are going to pitch two guns against each other. This, the mighty Maruku, potentially best value for money shotgun brand in the world. Against my Beretta double E double L. We're both big fans of, e of our guns yeah. and each other's guns. Yeah. Although this hasn't been out for a plane in a little while. No, no, but when you did used to use that, Mike, I've always said, I've never seen you shoot as well as when you shot that gun, Mike. Uh, I was also like 10 years younger. Uh, your eyesight was better. Didn't have kids. Uh, no. Uh, you slept quite regularly. Yeah, those were the days, weren't they? They were, they were impressive, mate. Oh. Anyway, first off, let's go warm up. Yeah, see how we get on. What do you love about your gun, Ant? The fact that when I was a nipper, I saw somebody on a shoot with a double E, and it's the first gun that I really appreciated, I think, for its beauty. But you've been a Beretta man for a long time on the same action body, right? So that comes from seeing that guy with a double E, double L. I couldn't afford a double E, double L when I was younger, so obviously I went for the silver pig. I shot myself a pig for years, loved it, but I still always had that end goal that I wanted to go double E double L. Got my double E double L, love it to bits. But do you know what's happened now? You want something else. I want an SL now. <laughs> uh, why Beretta? There's a good question. Why Beretta? You look at my silver pigeon, Mike. I've took that thing to hell and back. From oh, being... by the way, I just need to mention, you are taking that to hell and back. You need to look after that better. No, I don't. <laughs> No, don't. It's Could like get. having a shiny hammer. What's the point in having a shiny hammer? Some people care you for their things tools. with it. That's the point. That's Comparing that to a hammer, mate, would be that if you used a hammer, you'd hit your thumb every other <laughs> time. <laughs> and it's just that reliability, mate, to be honest. It's something that's pretty. It's designed for people my sort of size. It, it fits me lovely. a smaller frame of gun. That said, I shoot that gun quite well, too. So you do, mate. The only thing about it that's your size is the fact the stock's 14 and a half inches. But the fact that it also comes with an interchangeable pad and spacer system that means you can make it long enough is... Here's a point that I'll give Beretta over these guys. And Browning have sorted their act out, but Maruk still insists that everybody should shoot a 15 inch stock, which is yeah. why I've got an aftermarket one on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, know, I need a few shots to actually remember how this thing shoots. Let's see if it still works, mate, shall we? The noise. The noise oh. of a Maruku is something that I understand the Browning boys would say, that's our noise, you stole it. But most Marukus are, are more shagged out than Browning, so the noise is better. I'm going to say, it sounds, sounds to me like a door blowing in the wind but you know the thing about this gun that i love is i have also taken this to hell and back i have shot this to death i case color hardened it stupidly this gun rattles ridiculously i don't know if you can hear that but that is unhealthy people say they have a loose maruk this is a loose maruk but the thing is, it just performs time after time. The trigger guard is split in half. Like, everything is broken around this gun. I've destroyed this gun through hard use. And yet, every time I put it into my shoulder and pull the trigger, it still works. It goes bang. And that is a testament. That is, I must admit, that's one thing that whenever you buy a Maru, if you're buying a second hand Maru, you can generally put money on the fact that somebody's bought it, put thousands of cartridges through it, sold it and bought another one. And the ones that you buy, although they rattle, although they're as slack as a bag of knackers, they still work. Yeah, they are expensive to get up and together. You know, there's a lot of hand fitting, a lot of hand work that goes into repairing these old beasts when they get to this stage, which is why I've done none of it. They still work, whereas a Beretta, when it gets to that stage, needs to be fixed up. Yeah. But they're significantly easier to do. And I think that is a huge ball in the Beretta's court for regardless of whatever goes wrong, which very little does. I presume you've never had any problems. Never had any issues with mine, no. Apart from with my silver pitch, the ejectors are starting to wear out, but that's me and not it. Yeah, and to be fair, you know, you've had it a long time, you've put a lot of shells through it. It's a bit like saying you've got to change the brakes in your car. You have to do these things. <laughs> if you use them, they're going to wear out. Agreed, and you could get a non-ejector gun, but... Why would you do that? It's a good question. It's a big argument for non-ejector guns. Like... I never see you flinging the shells over your shoulder when you stood in a clay stand. No, but when I'm stood on a game drive, then you see me doing it one-handed with two in my mouth and one in the other hand. There's something about the way that Maruks recoil that's slightly different to other guns, and perhaps slightly less pleasant. That deep action and the way that, that you get a little bit more muzzle lift. Aggressive, would you say? No, 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 aggressive. it's just different. You know, the, the, the force is coming through the same regardless of how it's transferred to your body, right? So. Yeah. I feel they have a bit more muzzle lift than a Beretta, where they're a bit shallower in the streamline of the gun. It just sends it back. less in the shoulder, more in the yeah. face. Not that that's a bad thing. It's no. just, it's a thing. And to be fair, these are 24 gram cartridges. There is no bloody recoil. I love this old gun. Like it's, uh, does bring back good memories actually. And 
that's the thing about Marooks is, regardless of when you pick one up, it's just a Marook. They all kind of do what they say on the tin. There's nothing super special about them, but they are reliable. They shoot reliably. They feel reliably. The thing I see about both of these makes and guns is that you can pick up any model age variant from any of the lines that they do and they all feel, they all have that unique feel of that's a Beretta or that's a Marook and they all handle very similarly. Yes, you can have bigger barrels with a little bit more weight on the end. Yes, you can have shorter stocks, but inherently they all follow the same traits and you can feel it's a Marook. If somebody blindfolded you and put it in your hand, you could pretty much tell that's a Marook. You'd be hard pressed between it and a Browning until you did this. <laughs> <laughs> all right, mate, you get in them. Let's Set see. them alight. See if I can remember how to do it. I feel like the service from both companies is good. That's something that we rarely talk about is the service. I know that's very country specific and you speak to people in America or about Beretta USA, they'll say one thing, Beretta UK is uh, slightly different. And I suppose that is the problem with having a major brand with representatives across the world, it's all representing it in kind of different ways. But I think the, the point to make is that of all the years I've owned Berettas, what contact have I had with Berettas? That must speak volumes that the gun actually keeps going. If you keep going back to your, and you need that service of them to come back to you, surely there's something wrong with the product. Yeah, and it's, it's not to say that both of these companies, Beretta and Maruku, do not make dud guns occasionally. It it's happens. manufacturing. Something occasionally you'll get one that just is a bit of a pig. Yeah. But for the most part, you'd have to be a pretty special person to get more than one bad one. Yeah. But you'd start like worrying about how many ladders you're walking under, wouldn't you? Yeah, and you'd be jumping over the lines and the grates and stuff like that. There is just something about this gun that I love. And I know everybody loves their own guns and it can be any make, model or variant you want. But there's something about putting your own gun on your shoulder and it just rings your bell a little. It is yours, isn't it? And what's strange about mine is it no longer feels like mine. Which is kind of sad. <laughs> Over the course of the years of doing these kind of verses and comparison videos, I remember at the beginning being able to rip each gun apart, but the more I shoot and the more I hang out with people with different guns, the more you realize that actually, as long as it kind of fits you and you enjoy the way that it moves and handles and it works when you pull the trigger, that's kind of enough. And it, it always goes back to that thing, doesn't it? If you ask 10 different people the same question, you get 10 different answers. And I think you go with what you believe, you go with what you've learned as you're growing up, you go with what feels right to you and nobody can call you any different. But you're still never going to change my mind on Beretta, mate. It's still mine. Well, Here's a thing, let's go to another stand and we'll shoot each other's guns. All right. It's a big target, mate. It's a big uh, target. Uh, I mean, you just shot that better than you shot yours. You shoot that real smooth, which goes to show that Maruka is better than Barrera. <laughs> it goes to show that my argument about needing something longer, heavier, and with a big fat dirty rib on it for shooting clays may have a little bit of proof to it. Yeah, yeah. And a Maruka. No. Oh, what, what differences do you notice? There's a good question. What differences do you notice to your Beretta? The easy sitter incomer that just comes and packs on the end of the barrel that I missed the first time around Twice. goes to show me that with my Beretta, there's a little bit of cant on the gun that means that you have a slight amount of built-in lead. So that when you're shooting those big floppy incomers, you can almost just sit the gun on it and it gives it a little bit of front edge and you pull the trigger. Whereas with this, you actually have to put the end of the barrel exactly where you want to put the shot. No, that stock because, is set up very flat. Yeah, it is so flat, this. That's the biggest difference I see. Although with line, that helps you out, I think. It, there's not like a per, almost perfect clay gun. Hey, there's a video idea. Almost perfect clay gun. Something the almost perfect clay gun. To build like. the almost perfect clay gun to a, a decent budget wouldn't be hard, but it's about having the weight and having these things, but it's yeah. always difficult. I love a flat shooting gun. I also love a gun with rib. And every target, if you had the option, I'd be like, click, click, Yeah, click, if, click. You could, if you could have three different guns sat there that you could address different targets with as you took them round. Well, wouldn't that be handy? That'd be handy. Which is why I like these multi-chokes with the big heavy chokes in make a difference because you can effectively have two different barrel lengths or two different barrel speeds. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Adjustable combs do make a difference, but inherently having consistency is significantly better than doing all of that absolute junk of an idea. And although it's not a Marook thing, a lot heavier this than the double E. I mean, the Marook, Marooks are generally heavier pound for pound for equivalent model Berettas. The deeper action, there's just more steel going on. Yeah, yeah. The way the barrels are, they're far, further apart, farther apart, further apart, and hence you've got more metal between the barrels, more ribs, more weight. It's evident when it's in your hand. 
Do you notice a difference in trigger pulls? I'll think about it and tell you when I do this one because I try not to think about my trigger Because it's the sort pull. of thing geeks go on about and trap shooters go on about, but I think most sporting shooters really couldn't give a damn. No. We were just discussing that. The Rochondel does make an impressive break, doesn't it? Yeah, this is it. I mean, you broke that far target with a quarter choke and a 24 gram cartridge, which is a testament to your luck. <laughs> but the tiniest piece came off. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, it's a break, but it doesn't do anything for your insides, no. does it? You do like a good explosion. Yeah. I think that's the nice thing about Baruch's is they make a flat rib trap barrel that you can convert to a sporter. And I have missed shooting full and heavy three quarter chokes in a gun because it yeah. does feel good. When you hit them, they do die. Oh yeah, everything dies when you get it properly. That'll uh, be interesting in the next video when we get the skeet and skeet out to see how that breaks. 12 bore with full and full versus 20 bore with skeet and skeet, skeet on a round of sporting. Yeah, why not? Keep your eyes peeled for that one. All right, mate, which one next? Uh, let's go for this simple driven one that I missed. Trigger pull, no snap to it. It seems like, you know, like on a toy gun they used yeah, to have when you were a kid. It's like and a you get Nerf that gun trigger. Yeah, bang. Nerf actually bought their patent from Browning. <laughs> All right, shoot it on the way up then, like a champ. Kind of on the way up. I mean, you shot at it on the way up. And then I shot it before it stopped completely. Anything else discernibly different? The way it opens, closes, is there anything that puts you off versus the Beretta? <laughs> yeah, the fact that when I put your top lever across, it hurts my thumb because it's not machined as nice as a Beretta. The fact that it falls open. That's well, a nice thing. The fact it's not sat on sprung ejectors. It sits on its cocking rods, look. And yeah. now, give me a cartridge. Look, I'm in a hurry. Don't now look, pick look, up. ready? I mean, you're lucky it doesn't drop past the ejector, yeah. but. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Uh, all right. <laughs> look, that oh, makes mate, me want to be It's a shame to know you're that weak and feeble. Yeah, you it can't just makes handle me want to go. my mouth a little I bit. What I'm saying is, Marooks are for like real say, men, which is interesting because I know a lot of Northerners who shoot Marooks. I would rather help it in than let it fall in. That's all I'm saying. But it does hit stuff. I'll give you that. It does hit stuff. I like it. Yeah, you see that closing? Slop, slump, slump. Yeah, that is a... <laughs> Every a time I close it, I can't help myself. I have a little bit of sick in my mouth. I mean, you shoot that better than your, your own gun, just so. <laughs> yeah, I know, but <laughs> I'd never be able to keep my dinner down. That's the only trouble. But yeah, Johnny, it works. Right, you're it's in my room. You love value for money, and that's I'll where you what, really come in. Right, this is the best part about having a Morocco or a Morocco or Morocco. the people who cannot say the name right. Why buy one if you don't know how to say it? And then they all make up these eccentric ways of talking about them. I've got a Morocco or I've got a Morocco or I've got a Morocco. Sorry, what do you call your gun? Mine? Mine's double a Beretta. E. You call them the double E? It's a double E Beretta. It's an extra, extra lovely, lovely, isn't it? That's a, get out of my Beretta and see if you can shoot stuff with it. Oh. What's it like to have a little bit of quality in your hand, mate? Tell I mean, me. I'm not going to deny that a 30 inch game spec double E double L is one of the best value for money, beautiful side plates out there. And this piece of wood on yours is stunning. So I just want you to know that whatever comes out of my mouth hereafter, I'm a big fan of this berry gun. Are you sorry as well? Never sorry to insult. <laughs> but that grip is designed for people with three fingers. <laughs> Look, no, it it's, just falls it's off the bottom. designed for people who haven't got Titan genetics in their blood, mate. That's Look, the problem. Beretta make a series of guns with decent sized grips. This is not one of them. The stock spec is for a malnourished Yorkshireman. Can I just ask and you a question? Moves. Can I just ask? No. How was the filming of the film Troll? <laughs> was it okay? Now get on and shoot. I mean, all the technical brilliance of this locking system mean nothing when you don't know whether it's closed or not because it's not noisy. Yes, I know, but it makes this lovely like dook. It, oh. As it, as it throws to a closer look. To be fair, this gun moves very, very well, yeah. but it is not forgiving to idiocy. Yeah. It shoots that sitter easier than yours did. <laughs> Quite possibly. See, I do love this gun. There is nothing bad to say about the way that it shoots. It's a totally adequate gun that you could shoot at everything for the rest of your life. The reality is, is um, probably just as good as a Maruku. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Maruku do obviously make the Mark 60 that kind of parallels the movement of this, but the way this moves suits the size of the action. I think certainly it's horses for courses, and Beretta do make bigger guns. 
and they make smaller guns. The reality is every gun maker makes, certainly, that's a lie. Beretta make a gun for literally everybody in the world, and Maruku make guns for a very small niche of people because they only make three or four models. <laughs> a big gigantor play shooting nut. Yeah, something like that. And you, apparently. Apparently me as well, but. What we got now? F if it works. For those of you who didn't catch that, when you're shooting a difficult target, you have to change the way you say pull because it makes you shoot better. You go, oh. Watch, it'll help him hit it this time, watch. Pull. See, and he hit it as well. It looks pretty. Yeah. It works. I have nothing bad to say. I mean, this started as a sensible conversation. All it's turned into some <laughs> petty bitching. Well, that's the just reality is, is they're both great guns. They are. They're both just going to suit a slightly different person. To and let's be fair, both of those guns have put up with our abuse for many years. Yeah. That says a lot. That speaks volumes yeah. over the manufacturing of those guns, surely. 100%. I think the basic thing is neither is better than the other. They are just very different in the fit and the feel and the size of the grip. The biggest thing I think that we both clock is just the way they open, the way they close. Everything about that action is different. Yes. And one will turn you on and the other will not. Some people love the browning based action that just clunks in together, big, deep, huge amounts of locking surface. And some people like Berettas that just nice do, little it, do it very quietly. So this is perhaps an unfair comparison because actually what we should have brought if we really wanted to do, you know, potatoes, varses, potatoes, would have been to bring the MK11, which is built on the slimmer action and really does fight this fair and square. I prefer the engraving on the Beretta. I perhaps prefer the feel and the size of the MK11. Yeah. The bottom line is every gun maker loads loads of guns. Go and find one you like. They all work. Buying a main brand is not a waste of money because you cannot treat side brands this way quite as readily no you will get problems if you treat them like that i mean i i'm not one for gun care clearly clearly but berettas have seen me through thick and thin i cannot say anything bad about them for what they've you know how i throw them in the cupboard pull them out a couple of weeks later maybe six weeks later depending on what i'm doing and they keep going they keep going and going and going and that Frankenstein of a thing over there, your Maruk, has done exactly the same. Me and you have been out in the pouring down rain and you brought it out the next time and it's had the rust on the side of the barrel from the time before we used it. And it's put and it's up still with every bit of that abuse. Going. Going. For it, I can't sell it. I will never sell it. And although perhaps it's not as nice as some of the guns that I have now, that gun represents much like you and your first silver pigeon, my first step into a gun that was actually half decent. Thank you for watching guys. This channel is made possible by our amazing sponsors. You can find out more about them in the description down below. And if you wanna support the channel, you can join as a member. You get loads of extra content, well, some extra content, and occasionally we hook up and go clay shooting together as a membership group. If you don't feel like joining today, we really appreciate you watching and subscribing. Have a wonderful day.